Welcome to Our Lady of the Assumption Church in Ventura. We are so excited on this Pentecost Sunday to celebrate the gifts of the Spirit that represent the gifts of the church to all of us. As we anticipate opening our church for public worship this coming week, and especially on the Feast of Holy Trinity, we are reminded today that we're asking our parishioners who will be coming to us to be filled with the gifts of the Spirit, most especially the gift of patience. As we come to understand how to bring people into the church and to help them to be safe while they're with us, at this point there are only 100 people allowed to be in the church at any one service, and so we will be regulating your entry here. But as we do that, we are going to be very cognizant of the fact that there are many vulnerable people in our parish who may feel that they cannot come on Sundays. Our weekday masses at 6.30 and 8 o'clock may be a time for them to consider and for you to consider to come to mass at that time. Maybe there will be less people here and with the social spacing that we will have here in the church, we will try to keep all of you safe. But we pray that the Lord will bless all of our parishioners, helping them to celebrate once again the gifts of the Spirit, the gifts that gather us together as church. And so let us prepare ourselves now as we prepare to celebrate these mysteries of God's great love for us through the power of the Holy Spirit. Prepare yourself for this great celebration today. We gather this day on this most holy solemnity of Pentecost, brought together by the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And so as we come together as a church, let us begin our celebration, blessing ourselves in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My brothers and sisters, as we gather today on this great solemnity of Pentecost, we hear the promise of Christ being brought to the fulfillment, the promise that Jesus made to his disciples to send to them and to us an advocate, a spirit of guidance and of wisdom to lead us closer to the heart of God our Father. And so as we come together on this great solemnity, celebrating the fulfillment of the promise that Christ has made to us, let us, led by the breath of the Holy Spirit, come to our Heavenly Father, mindful of the sins that we have committed, and asking Him once again for His mercy and His forgiveness. And so together we say, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have but greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. 
Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glory. Let us pray. O God, who by the mysteries of today's great feast sanctify your whole church and every people and nation, pour out, we pray, the gifts of the Holy Spirit across the face of the earth and with the divine grace that was at work when the gospel was first proclaimed, fill now once more the hearts of believers. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the time for Pentecost was fulfilled, they were all in one place together. And suddenly there came from the sky a noise like a strong driving wind, and it filled the entire house in which they were. Then there appeared to them tongues as a fire, which parted and came to rest on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different tongues as the Spirit enabled them to proclaim. 
Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven staying in Jerusalem. At this sound, they gathered in a large crowd, but they were confused because each one heard them speaking in his own language. They were astounded, and in amazement they asked, Are not all these people who are speaking Galileans? Then how does each of us hear them in his native language? We are Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, inhabitants of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the districts of Libya near Cyrene, as well as travelers from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. Yet we hear them speaking in our own tongues of the mighty acts of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. To God. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, my God, you are great indeed. How manifold are your works, O oh Lord! The earth is full of your creatures. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. If you take away their breath, they perish and return to their dust. When you send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the earth. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord be glad in his works. Pleasing to him be my theme. I will be glad in the Lord. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different forms of service, but the same Lord. There are different workings, but the same God who produces all of them in everyone. To each individual, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for some benefit. As a body is one, though it has many parts, and all the parts of the body, though many, are one body, so also Christ. For in one Spirit, we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free persons, and we were all given to drink of one spirit. The word of the Lord. Come, O Holy Spirit, come. And from your celestial home, 
shed a ray of light divine. Come, O Father of the poor, come, source of all our store, come within our bosoms shine. You of comfort as the best, you're the soul's most welcome guest, sweet refreshment here below. In our labor rest most sweet, grateful coolness in the heat, solace in the midst of woe. Oh, most blessed light divine, shine within these hearts of yours and our inmost being fill. Where you are not, we have not, nothing good in deed or thought, nothing free from taint of ill. Heal our wounds, our strength renew. On our dryness pour your dew. Wash the stains of guilt away. Bend the stubborn heart and will. Melt the frozen, warm the chill. Guide the steps that go astray. On the faithful who adore and confess you evermore in your sevenfold gift descend. Give them virtue's sure reward. Give them your salvation, Lord. Give them joys that never end. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. be with you and with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to john glory, glory to, to you lord. O lord on the evening of that first day of the week when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the jews jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them peace be with you when he had said this he showed them his hands and his side the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. When the Holy Spirit makes its appearance, wonderful things happen. 
We read it in the book of Genesis that at the time of creation, the Spirit hovered over the waters in those seven days of creative activity of God. And the earth is born. And God said, it is very good. But for us, because of that spirit, he said, but we, created in the image and likeness of God, are very good. And it is then that power of the spirit continued to find itself manifest. It was manifest when prophets and kings were called to lead the people and to be spokespersons for God. That same spirit then hovered over Jesus at his baptism. This is my beloved son, said the voice from heaven, in whom I am well pleased. It is because that spirit descended upon the Lord. It is that same spirit that we celebrate then today. But every day, every day is a Pentecost experience for us. Because the spirit is alive and moving and showing itself in the midst of God's church. Behind me on the wall are banners which show us the gifts and the fruits of the Spirit. The gifts of the the Spirit that came upon the disciples. In a gospel today, what is it that Jesus says? Peace be with you. Not once, but twice. Peace be with you. These are men filled with fear. You can imagine as they gathered in the upper room. I wonder if anyone looked around and said, who else will betray us? Judas did it. And we lost our Savior. Will someone else come? But it was Jesus who came to quiet their fear desiring to give them peace. That is the peace that Jesus desires for us. That is why the power of the Spirit is so important, that the Spirit of the Lord that descends upon us is to take away the fear that so often paralyzes us. It's that fear of rejection. It's the fear of what's going to happen tomorrow. It's the fear of where our lives are going. And the peace of the Lord is desiring to make us whole. What happened in the upper room when Jesus brought that peace to his people, to his friends, it was to give them wholeness, forgiveness of sin. 50 days later, the fullness of that experience was brought to them in the Pentecost moment. And what was happening there was then the tongues of fire that descended from heaven came upon them. And in that image then, we see the divine coming to them. That's the image of those tongues of fire. It is that the divine is present. The spirit is present with them. And in their diversity, What did these people see and hear? Oneness, unity. That is what the church is about. And that is what the Spirit is to give us. And that is why then today we celebrate that oneness of Spirit that the Spirit is giving to us since the days of creation, the beginning of time. This is not something that we celebrate that happened once. Mm -mm. It is happening over and over again when we allow ourselves to be the Spirit's presence in the world. We receive that in our sacraments of the church. Baptism, confirmation, Eucharist. In a moment, the priest at this Mass, Father Joe, and I will place our hands over the gifts. And what will we pray? At the prayer of Epiclesis, that the Spirit will descend upon these gifts of bread and wine and through the power of the Spirit make them new into the body and the blood of Christ. And in a powerful way, it is that same Spirit that hovers over all of us. And so all of us are to be transformed into this image of the body of Christ. 
And we are to use then the gifts of the Spirit that the Lord gives to each of us to build up this body. That's something to pray for. To pray for the end of division so that we can be united in the Spirit. And you know, there are times when we find ourselves actually understanding the gifts of that Spirit. I remember when I was off five, I wanted to learn how to ride a bike. I didn't have a bike, but a neighbor friend had a bicycle. And so I remember going up to their house. What I didn't realize was the bicycle was too big for me. And so getting onto this bike, I had to find a place where I could stand taller than the bike, get my leg over, get onto the bike, and then I would go off. And inevitably, I fell over and over and over again. And it was a process of getting up, picking up the bike, going over to the side, getting back onto this, this thing that helped me get onto the bike. I get onto the bike, ride a little bit, and fall over. By the end of my training period, which was over days and days and days, I looked like something out of a battle. I was bleeding. I was scraped. My hands were black from hitting the asphalt. The bike didn't look much better either. But there was something about wanting to ride that bike that got me to suffer and to go through pain. And eventually... I was able to ride the bike. What is that if it isn't the Spirit? Patience, endurance, tenacity. Those are the gifts of the Spirit. Maybe I tasted it there, but don't we all taste it in our own life? Don't we all see it happening at times more profoundly than others? No wonder Jesus had to say to the disciples, peace be with you twice. They didn't get it. No wonder it took 50 days after Easter, after the resurrection, for the church to come to a deeper awareness that the Spirit was going to be alive in them. Well, they were experiencing it already. That Spirit of Jesus was with them. They knew it. And when he says, I must now return to the Father and send you the Advocate, the Spirit of life, No wonder the church burst forth. People could see and understand. But what were they seeing? They were seeing the Spirit manifested. How do we see that Spirit manifested? In kindness and gentleness and peace and patience and endurance. That's how we see it. We see it in the great gift of love. The relationship of the Father and the Son is the Spirit. And as our creed will tell us, It is that spirit that emerges from the relationship of the Father and the Son, which is love. Anytime we experience love, we are experiencing the spirit. And so on this Pentecost, we as a church must come into the world today once more enlivened and empowered by the gifts of the spirit. These are not to be hidden, but these have to be celebrated and shared. These have to be given away. We have to end division and come back to unity. We have to end strife with peace. We have to take away people's fears so that they can be made whole. The sacraments of the church are the celebrations of the gifts of the Spirit. And most especially this gift of Eucharist we celebrate today is the greatest manifestation of that that the Spirit desires to be with us and to change us into the expressions and the presence of God. And certainly in this time of the coronavirus, in this time of rioting in our streets, in this time of racial tension, in this time of political division, what greater prayer can we pray than to ask that the power of the Spirit First, change me so that then I can help change you and you can change those around you. Without the gifts or the fruits of the Spirit, we will languish 
but empowered by the Spirit, we will move from fear to peace. We will move from anxiety to joy. We will move from hatred and division to love. May we be filled with the Spirit of Pentecost and let us rejoice that God will use us as his instruments today and always because the Spirit is always here. We're just slow to recognize it. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and enkindle in them the fire of your love. Led by that spirit of unity, let us, as a people of God, profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life for the world to come. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Gathering together this Pentecost, we lift our prayers to the Father through the Holy Spirit. For the church, that we may faithfully confess Jesus as Lord and be guided by the Holy Spirit to continue the mission of Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a spirit of unity, that God will break all divisions that separate the human family and restore our ability to work together. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a spirit of hope, that all who are overwhelmed may find new reasons to live and be gifted with a vision of a hopeful future. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a spirit of love, that we may continue to fulfill Christ's command to love one another by giving ourselves in service of others, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a spirit of forgiveness, that God will break the bonds of resentment and free us to forgive others as we have been forgiven by God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a spirit of healing on all the sick, especially Ruth Gallegos, Bob Floor, and Scholastica Lee, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the soul of those who have died, especially Catherine Keating, Colette Hanley, Janice Huffman, Bill Tosney, and Jack Lewis, that they may enjoy the everlasting peace of God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the intentions of all the parishioners of Our Lady of the Assumption and the repose of the souls of Myrna Schmidt, Doris Bodardus, Leo Gendron, and Ophelia Bravo, for whom this Mass is being offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those intentions not spoken, which we now share with the Lord, 
we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of mercy and of love, you sent your spirit to dwell in us. Hear these our prayers that we might one day enjoy everlasting peace with you and your Son, Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. As we have heard the word of God proclaimed to us and filled with the gift of the Holy Spirit that leads us to a path of unity, we invite ourselves to continue to grow towards that path of further fulfillment in our relationship with God. So we are excited to announce that we are continuing to prepare to reopen our church. We will be reopening for daily masses this coming Wednesday, June 3rd, and coming back to our normal mass schedule of 6.30 a.m. and 8 a.m. mass here in the church. We continue to ask you for your patience and your understanding as we make the necessary changes and adjustments to adhere to the guidelines that have been set for us to come back as a place of worship by the Archdiocese as well as by the CDC, guided by a principle of caring for the safety and well-being of everyone in our community. We ask that you please watch our parish website and our parish Facebook page for more detailed information on how those protocols and those, those guidelines will be implemented specifically to our needs here at our parish of Our Lady of the Assumption. Volunteers are needed as we move forward in our transition to serve as ushers, as greeters, as hospitality ministers at the doors of our church. We thank all those who have already signed up to be volunteers, but we continue to need many more people to step up to serve as volunteers. So anyone who is interested or willing to serve as a volunteer, we ask that you please sign up using the link that is found on our parish website. We'd like to thank each and every one of you for your generosity in your prayers, your understanding, and your contributions to the parish during these difficult times. We thank you for all the wonderful things that you have done for us and letting us know that you continue to be with us. And in that same spirit, on this great solemnity of Pentecost, Archbishop Gomez has asked each and every parish in the Archdiocese to promote a food drive for those in need. So here at, the, at our parish of Our Lady of the Assumption, we are asking everyone, if you are able to, to contribute non-perishable food items for those in need. We ask that you please bring them to the rectory sometime during this week as we continue to serve and to look out for our family members in this family of Christ. As we continue to move forward in our preparation to come back as a family of God, may the Holy Spirit continue to lead us and guide us back to our home once again. your spirit renew the face of the earth come lord jesus send us your spirit renew the face of the earth come to us spirit of god breathe in us now we sing together Spirit of hope and of light, fill our lives. Come to us, Spirit of God. Come, Lord Jesus, send us your Spirit. Renew the face of the earth. Come, Lord Jesus, send us your Spirit. Renew the face of the earth. with the fire of your love burn in us now bring us together come to us dwell in us change our lives oh lord come to us spirit of god come lord jesus send us your spirit renew the face of the earth 
bless your spirit, renew the face of the earth. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that as promised by your Son, the Holy Spirit may reveal to us more abundantly the hidden mystery in this sacrifice and graciously lead us into all truth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for bringing your Paschal mystery to completion, you bestowed the Holy Spirit today on those you made your adopted children by uniting them to your only begotten Son. The same Spirit, as the church came to birth, opened to all peoples the knowledge of God, and brought together the many languages of the earth in profession of the one true faith. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, Every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, indeed holy O lord and all you have created rightly gives you praise for through your son our lord jesus christ by the power and working of the holy spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore O lord we humbly implore you by the same spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mm -hmm. 
the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Our Lady of the Assumption, St. Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and the glorious martyrs and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and the salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis our Pope, and Jose our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you, in your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Filled with the presence of the Spirit in our lives, let us together pray in the words that Christ, our Savior, taught us. Our, our Father, Father, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy, thy name. Thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth, earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Let us offer one another the sign of peace. Lamb of God, 
you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. the act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the Eucharist. I love you above all things and desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me from being separated from you. Amen. is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour
Let us pray. O God, who bestow heavenly gifts upon your church, safeguard, we pray, the grace you have given, that the gift of the Holy Spirit poured out upon her may retain all its force, and that the spiritual food may gain her abundance of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. Bow your heads for God's blessing. Before our final blessing, once again, as we prepare to reopen our church, we continue to ask that you please keep your eyes open on our parish website and our parish Facebook page for more information regarding the details of how we will be coming back to church when our doors open once again, starting this Wednesday, June 3rd. So the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May God, the Father of lights, who was pleased to enlighten the disciples' minds by the uphorring of the Spirit, the paraclete, grant you gladness by his blessing and make you always abound with the gifts of that same Spirit. Amen. May the wondrous flame that appeared above the disciples powerfully cleanse your hearts from every evil and pervade them with its purifying light. Amen. Amen. And may God, who has been pleased to unite many tongues in the profession of one faith, give you perseverance in that same faith. And by believing, may you journey from hope to clear vision. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, alleluia. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. See?